Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Westside Unitarian Universalist Church. I'm the Reverend Carol Badeau. My pronouns are she and her, and I am privileged to serve Westside as minister. We're happy to have you with us this morning and wishing you a happy Thanksgiving weekend. We are a community that welcomes all, regardless of orientation, identity, theology, or um, uh, political views. This is a place where you are welcome, regardless of what you believe. So it's not so much what you believe as how you live your values. We are excited to announce that starting in a week, we will be holding indoor services again. We will continue to live stream. So those of you who are with us virtually, the service will continue to be available to you at this same time. But for those of you who are ready to come and be together indoors, we will be gathering indoors starting next week, December 5th at 11 a.m. A few things you need to know about that. Masks are required. The speakers will be um, up here in the chancel not using masks. We will take our masks down to speak, put them back up when we are not speaking. But those of you who are sitting in the sanctuary will be wearing masks at all times. Also, please note that there will be no religious exploration classes or child care. At this time, we're just not ready to provide those. Next week's service is going to be uh, a service based on a book that we talked about a few months ago and that we're going to be talking about again during coffee hour next week. It's a book called The ABCs of LGBTQ+. If you'd like to read that book and you haven't had a chance to do so yet, you can shoot me an email or send us an email in the office and we'll find a way to get you a copy of that. But you don't need to have read the book to discuss it with us. So the service will be from 11 to about 11.40 and then we will have a conversation both virtually and in person during coffee hour. Also starting in another week, uh, in about 10 days, starting on December 7th at 6 p.m., that's a Tuesday evening, for the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st, the first three Tuesdays in December, we're going to be doing an adult RE class that's going to be virtually, not in person. And it's about exploring what it means to have Christian roots in the Unitarian Universalist tradition. So there are many um, UUs who have the experience of having Christian roots and Christian identity in some part of their life, but who have left that tradition and come to Unitarian Universalism. These three classes will be an opportunity to talk about what that means and how that feels for you. So you're invited to join that. You can find the Zoom information to join those conversations on our website. Today's service is a tradition. Uh, today we have Chris Edkins leading the annual Bread Communion, which is our annual Thanksgiving weekend service. So we are thrilled to have Chris doing that today. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Edkins. Uh, I'm a lay leader here at Westside, and I'll be conducting the service today. It's a tradition in the UU Church that some services are, are lay-led, and this service is one of those. And uh, as Reverend Carol said earlier, she'll be leading the service next week. So uh, we hope you'll join us for that. Uh, I'm going to uh, light our chalice. And our chalice lighting words today come from uh, Katie Gelfland. We light our chalice as a symbol of gratitude as we celebrate the abundance of our lives together. In this sanctuary, we harvest bushels of strength for one another and offer our crop with the hands of compassion and generosity. In the authentic and gentle manner of our connections, we cultivate a simple sweetness to brighten our spirits. May we be grateful for the ways we nourish and uplift each other. For it is the sharing of this hallowed time together that sustains us. Today we celebrate our Thanksgiving service, and it's a tradition here at Westside that we do so with the Bread Communion. And since we're still social distancing, and many of you are watching via YouTube, we'll each have our own bread uh, and our own libation to drink, uh, wherever we're joining from. Uh, so if you haven't done so already, please uh, get yourself a, a wafer or a cracker or a piece of bread and something to drink, so that when we come to that part in the service, uh, you, you have something ready. 
our Unitarian Universalist denomination derives from a union of Unitarians and Universalists, both historically Christian denominations, though not considered to be orthodox by the mainstream church. Nevertheless, we have our roots in Christianity, and we have a share in the tradition of the Holy Communion. As you use, however, we don't necessarily share a common interpretation of the significance or symbolism of the act of taking communion together. I personally believe that communion does involve a miracle, however, according to my definition of a miracle, that is. So let's look at some of the definitions of miracle and see which one of them fits the best for this particular one under, uh, under my understanding. The first one I'm going to look at is a, a surprising or welcome event that is not explicable by natural or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of divine agency. The work of divine agency, not explicable by natural or scientific laws. I know there are many of us modern day you use who, by this definition, would say there are no miracles. And perhaps many historical you use too. For naturalists who believe that no divine power is necessary to explain the creation or ordering of the universe as we find it, all phenomena, of course, are the result of natural or scientific law. Though that law may be as yet undiscovered, or even unknowable to human intellect, or indeed any intellect, or an underlying law or condition may not be accessible to observation, such as the conditions prior to the instant at the beginning of the universe, or the exact location momentum of a particle, but are still considered to be natural. Many early UUs and scientists, for example, Sir Isaac Newton, who invoked the name of God, were deists. The deist believes in a creator God who set the universe in motion and decided the fundamental properties of matter and energy. But having done so, and found it good, declined to interfere any further in the course of creation by exerting external power and changing the course of events. We could be grateful to this God for our existence, and indeed the creation itself would be a wondrous miracle. But after that, the universe would play out in a very similar way to that conceived by the naturalist, given it had the same properties. And then, of course, there is the God of miracles who does intervene directly in this world to bring about outcomes that are to assumed to be outside the natural order. Much has been said about this God, and many questions asked about whether, if they had the power or the will, they might or might not fix this or that pressing problem in the world. Of course, a monotheistic God is not the only option for us to consider when uh, discussing divine agency in miracles. For those that believe we all partake in a share of the divine, outcomes that proceed from prayer or spiritual work might also be considered to be a miracle of divine agency, according to this definition. Since this weekend is Thanksgiving and bread communion, though, that's not the kind of miracle that I wish to kind of draw our attention to uh, today. So let's move on to the next one. A highly improbable or extraordinary event, development or accomplishment that brings very welcome consequences. We can all agree that improbable and extraordinary things sometimes do happen. Perhaps the amazing thing is that so many of them do bring welcome consequences. Pleasant surprises happening in a universe that physics tells us is always tending to greater disorder. But then probability is not grasped intuitively by the human mind. We often see patterns of meaning and causality in the fluctuating events of the world. Misunderstanding and misunderestimating risks based upon our various cognitive biases. Like the birthday paradox, for example. When within a small group of people we find somebody who shares the same birthday as us, it seems like an amazing coincidence. But a cold statistical analysis tells us that in a group of 23 people, there is around a 50% chance that two people share the same birthday. On the other hand, the huge prize offered by the National Lottery and news stories of the winners causes us to overestimate our minuscule chance of winning the lottery. 
Douglas Adams once wrote, in an infinite universe, anything, even the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is possible. But an infinite universe does not necessarily lead to every possibility being realized. Depending on the rules and the starting conditions of a universe, a single pattern can form that repeats over and over to infinity. And an infinite number of monkeys would probably wander off to find food or companionship rather than stay at the typewriter until they accidentally reproduce the works of Shakespeare. Which brings us to our next definition of a miracle. An amazing product or achievement or an outstanding example of something. For example, a machine which was a miracle of design. This was the definition I was looking for. We human beings are the top of the food chain with phenomenal intelligence, capable of the almost wondrous acts of creativity, organization, and understanding. Reaching back to probe the very origins of the universe, but we are not self-made. Again, returning to Sir Isaac Newton, he said, if I have seen further than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So it is with human existence itself. We stand not on the shoulders of giants, but float on oceans of algae, perch atop tall trees, ride on the backs of animals, wade through plains of grass, and are sustained by the buzzing of insects. For billions of years, the interdependent web of existence has formed and grown and changed on our planet. Without it, there would be no oxygen for humans to breathe, and no food, only barren chemical elements and compounds baked by the harsh light of the sun. As we give thanks today, let us not forget that we are part of the great cycles of life and not separate from them. We owe our existence to them. The bread communion is an ancient ritual that has its roots in the Christian history of our denomination, and in it we formally eat and drink a symbolic morsel. In keeping with our UU principles, there is no test of creed in order to participate. You simply need to be a part of this community today. All are welcome. Do you believe in miracles? A miracle will happen here today. We will take food into our bodies, a simple piece of bread, a sip of grape juice, and it will become part of a living, breathing human being. Its substance will become part of our living tissue. Its energy will power our thoughts and emotions, as these words feel, feed our spirit. I would invite you to take your morsel and your drink and drink it now as the choir comes up and we will sing We Gather Together.
Thank you very much to the choir for practicing that song and singing with us today. First time we've had the choir singing in a long time. Beautiful. Thank you. Please join me in an attitude of prayer, meditation or contemplation. Spirit of life, we gather today in a spirit of gratitude. Life brings many challenges, losses and sorrows. Sometimes we don't feel that gratitude is appropriate, that the day, the month, the year even calls for something somber, a feeling of gravity. Help us remember that we are alive today. Our hearts beat and the breath of life is in us. All of us, I hope, have a place to go home to, a bed to sleep in and food to eat. But more, we have life. The vision of beauty, or the sound of music, or the touch of loving hands. We have the memories of our past to call upon. Children raised, or the good things that we have brought into the world through our work. Help us remember, each day is a gift. May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be well. May I be protected from inner and outer harm. May I know peace. May I be whole. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be protected from inner and outer harm. May you know peace. May you be whole. May we be filled with loving kindness. May we be well. May we be protected from inner and outer harm. May we know peace. May we be whole. May all beings everywhere be filled with loving kindness. May they be well. May they be protected from inner and outer harm. May all beings everywhere know peace. May they know spiritual wholeness. Amen. As our service draws to a close, we will extinguish our chalice with these words. In this season of waning light, may the light and warmth of this chalice go with you through the week. May it be a light of love, compassion and hope to all you meet on your journey. Go in peace. <laughs>